The number one question I get asked is how to use LinkedIn Recruiter properly. Let me show you. Hi, I'm Holly and I make tutorial videos just like this one to make sure that you can use your technology to the maximum. Make sure you subscribe to my videos so you don't miss out on what's coming up next. LinkedIn Recruiter is a great way to find high quality candidates and clients. It's very easy to get caught up in all the technology around it and therefore you don't end up using it properly. But I'm gonna show you how you can make the most out of LinkedIn Recruiter. Here we go. Before we kick off, I wanna delve right into talking about LinkedIn projects. A LinkedIn project is where you can organize all of your candidates, all of your notes and everything for that specific job. So you may do numerous searches over the course of a few weeks to find the relevant candidates, but store them under one project so they are all in one place. This is gonna mean that you are tracking everything in one place with, with all the notes accessible to you and to your team. So the best way to do this is by using LinkedIn projects. Here's how to set one up. So let's start filling out the details of our project. I've got the, the project name, the project description, and I've made sure that the salary is included in there as well. We've got the job title, and now where possible, use a LinkedIn predetermined field. The location is gonna be London, brilliant. Seniority is gonna be associate, and you can put the company you're hiring for as well, and let's just say this is we're hiring for Restack. There we go. Now it's up to you if you make this private or public. If you make this private, only um, you can see this. If you make this public, all members in your organization can see that. I highly recommend making all of your um, projects and everything you do on LinkedIn Recruiter public. This means if you're on annual leave or you're on a holiday or you're sick and someone has to come in and pick up your work, they can access everything. We've made that public and we now need to make the project. However, if you have LinkedIn job slots available, you can add a job post here and I'll be delving into that in my next video. But for this example, we're now gonna go ahead and create the project. If you need to change any of the project details at any point, if that's the salary, the title, anything, you can do that from the project details page. Additionally, you can, they've got some further settings here, like turning the pipelining stages on or off, adding further candidates in by bulk, or even amending the project members. So that can all be done under project settings. Straight away, you can already see that LinkedIn has used the talent pool feature and has created a search for me already. We can now refine that and build out the search so we can get the high quality candidates that we need. But this has been done automatically by LinkedIn. Additionally, if you've got a job slot, candidates will start filtering through to this page as well. The first feature I want to show you about adding candidates in is adding them in manually. This is quite an unusual thing to do, but you never know um, when you might need this. So let's hypothetically say we've got a candidate who you know is perfect for this role already. You spoke to them a few weeks ago. You can add them in just like that. So what I would like to do in this scenario, if you know we've got a search here, is create a brand new one just up here for you. So we're gonna to go to start a new recruiter search. Brand new search, there is no candidates on here. Now the three things every search must start with is a job title. That's the number one thing. So we're gonna go for executive assistant. And once again, the best way to use LinkedIn is using the automated titles that are coming up. So we've got 1.9 million people here. I think that's far too many for us to contact. So we're gonna break this down further. So we've got location and this role is in London. Okay, brilliant. That's down to 45,000. And the last thing I really try and get people to um, break their searches down to is in industry. Let's say this is an executive assistant for the real estate industry. So all recruiter searches, the top three things to do are the title, the location, the industry. Now, there are a lot of people who come on to LinkedIn Recruiter and create a really, really, really niche specialized search. However, this pulls up three people. That's not gonna give you access to the talent that you need. My piece of advice is start with those three things. Once again, that's title, industry, location, and you can filter down your search at any point, but always start with those three basic things. So we've now got 1.2 thousand results. 
much more manageable than though I think it was 1.9 million we had uh, a few minutes ago. Now, the last thing I want to discuss with you is this little bit here, hide previously reviewed. So don't forget on LinkedIn, if you see the information tab, click on this and this gives you the information you need. So for hide previously viewed, when applied, we continually surface new candidates you haven't seen by hiding candidates you've already viewed. Profiles will be removed eight hours after you've viewed them. Now, I propose that this gets turned off because you may well have spoken to a candidate two months ago, two years ago. So let's remove these so you've got higher access to more. So we've done the search. We've got the candidates. I now want to draw your attention to LinkedIn Recruiter Spotlights. When you hover over LinkedIn Spotlights, it will give you the criteria. So open to work is candidates who have intentionally marked they are looking for new opportunities. Now, I know that if you in mail candidates who are open to work, they are 37% more likely to accept your in mails. Active talent is candidates who have shared a profile update, a public resume on LinkedIn, or work at a company that might be experiencing layoffs. So they're also very likely to reply. Rediscovered candidates are four times more likely to reply to your in mails. They are candidates that have been saved or messaged by somebody in your company or have applied to one of your jobs. Internal candidates are people who are internal to your business who have expressed interest in roles. You may not be using that so much if you are in a recruitment agency. People who are interested in your company are twice as likely to reply to your emails, and they are candidates who have selected that they are interested in future roles at your company or interacted with your company's content, including following the company page. For some reason, you have to scroll over for the final spotlight, but that is have company connections. And they're candidates who are connected to your employees at your company on LinkedIn. Therefore, once again, they are more likely to reply to your emails. So when messaging people and adding them to your pipelines, I recommend starting with spotlights first. I've gone on to the open to work candidates who I know are really likely to reply. And I'm going to now save these to my project. So I'm going to go through the list slowly and surely one by one looking at their data, clicking into their profiles, and I'm going to get these clicked and saved to my project. I'm not messaging anybody yet. I'm just reviewing their profiles, saving them to the project. What we need to do then, we've already set up our project. So we'll go on, add them in here as uncontacted, save. I would now advise spending a few minutes going through the various other spotlights, or whoever else might appear in the main list to get a good number of candidates saved to your project so we can start messaging them. Don't forget, you can select more than one spotlight at a time to speed things up. Once you've got your candidate list ready and you've got enough people in your pipeline, let's get messaging. But before we do that, we need to save the search. Now, this is quite a basic search we've, we've, we've created here. But if you're doing a really complicated search, you don't want to lose all of that work that you've already done. So we're going to go to save the search. So we are going to save this as executive assistant and turn search alerts on. What does that mean? Great question. If a new candidate falls into this criteria of your search, you get notified. That means that minutes, the minute new candidates come in to LinkedIn as open to work or active talent, you're the first one to know. So get ahead of your competition, get in front of the candidates at the right time, but making sure that you receive up-to-date alerts for this project. Once you've done that, save. Perfect. So you can now access that save search at any point. And there is just a list here of all the searches you, you can refer back to at any point. So we're now going to go into the pipeline that you've made. Here we go. So currently we've got two candidates in the pipeline. They're both uncontacted. Now, and not enough people use this pipeline feature. It is here for a reason. Please use it because it makes your life and your pipeline easier. And again, if someone else needs to come in and view this, they can get it. So what we're going to quickly look at here is what this information shows you on each profile. So I've added me, myself in here to the to the to the search. So you've got my experience, my education. There's been one message. There's been two projects and four views. So you've got quite a lot of information here. A non-negotiable that I have is using notes and reminders. When you speak to a candidate at any point in the process, these are the things that you need to add in. Salary, expected salary, 
notice. These sorts of information can get really easily lost in millions of LinkedIn notes. So under the, the notes section on recruiter tools, put in the candidate's current salary, the salary they want from their new job, their expected salary, and their notice period. And I would share this to, with anybody in your organization. There we go, which is this button here. So they can see this and they can access when they need this information. Not many people do this. Please, please use it. Furthermore, there's a button here called reminders. Yeah, I bet, I bet you didn't know there was a LinkedIn reminder feature either. Again, this is something that not many people use, but the good recruiters are. You can use this uh, to create reminders in your recruiter inbox. On the date of your reminder, you'll see a blue dot to the left of the reminders on the left rail of your LinkedIn homepage. This is gonna remind you to follow up with the candidate. So let's say there's a scenario at which point a candidate says, I'm not interested in, in speaking with you at the moment, I'm still in a contract, but I finish in six weeks, six months time, add that in, call them a month before that. So you can engage with them. Use these reminders, it is a massive help. It's taking stuff out of your brain onto the technology and it's gonna mean that you don't forget to get important tasks done. To recap, use notes and reminders for every candidate. We'll now touch upon the all important in mail. The best recruiters I know have got templates set up. You might be sending out hundreds of messages a month. So create templates that work for you. After this video, watch my other video that is all about getting the most of in mails. I cover things like personalization, scheduling, follow ups calls to action to make sure you are making the most out of those very, very precious in-mails. Once your in-mail is set up and ready to go, make sure you change your signature. You might wanna add in a link to your phone number, your email address, um, even a book a meeting link. So you can make sure that your candidates are as likely to reply to these messages as possible. You will see down here, there's a lock button. This means that the conversation is available to only me. However, again, where possible changes to everyone in your organization to give everybody the opportunity to collaborate and have visibility of what's going on in your pipeline. In-mails are free to those who are your first degree connections. Open link members and job applicants are also free as well. Second degree LinkedIn members and third degree users a credit. However, if they reply, or accept your in-mail, you get the credit back. If you go to product settings and then usage, you can see exactly how many in-mails you have left. I've now sent this message to Holly. So we need to change the status of the candidate. So we're gonna put contacted. In our pipeline, we've now got someone who, one person who's uncontacted and somebody who is contacted. Use this to make sure you're keeping on top of everything. The more people, uh, you have in your project, the more important it is to stay on top of this. But you can um, go through this to really manage your pipeline and make sure that you're using this to support your clients and candidates and follow that process from start to, to placement. Follow these tips and tricks to get the most out of LinkedIn Recruiter to find high quality candidates and clients. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you stay up to date with my latest videos.